So let's uh, start uh, first with, uh, with prayer. Let's uh, ask God to bless our time. Heavenly Father, salamat po Panginoon for your goodness and mercy for challenging us today. So magitan po Panginoon ni Howard Hendricks and uh, thank you Lord na uh, he inspires us even though he's now with you in heaven. So we pray Lord that we may become the kind of uh, teachers or preachers Panginoon that he talks about. Uh, those who are continually uh, learning, Panginam. So, Father, we commit this time to you right now in Jesus' name. Amen. So, uh, first thing is, uh, why study the Bible? Okay? Bakit natin kailangan pag-aralan ang Bible? Even before going to the notes, you know? What would be the uh, typical answer to that? Why would we study the Bible? To understand the Bible. Okay? Anything else? So we may be equipped, okay? So we can apply it in our lives. So we can apply it in our lives, okay? So parang binasa nyo na rin to, okay? So let's uh, look at that. No, just kidding, okay? So number one, it is essential to growth, okay? First Peter chapter two verse two. Can somebody read that? First Peter chapter two verse two. Um, hmm. Like newborn babies, create your spiritual milk so that by it you may grow up in your salvation. All right. Like newborn uh, babies. babies, okay? Sino sa inyo nakakita na ng bagong panganak na baby? Okay, anong, you know, what would be the typical observation sa isang bagong panganak na baby, no? Fragile. Fragile, okay? Yun na ganda napansin mo, the fact na fragile siya. So since we're talking about the Word of God, okay, ano ang kapansin-pansin sa isang newborn baby in relation to milk? Right. So, sa madaling seta, it's not very hard to motivate them to to, to eat ano, or to drink milk. It's something na gusto nila. So, when the Bible says like newborn babies, di ba? Uh, again, what is the text? Like newborn babies. Crave pure spiritual milk. Crave pure spiritual milk. So, the question to ask ourselves is that, paano nangyayari yun? How does a person crave for pure spiritual milk? Is that something na pwede mo lang sabihin sa sarili mo? I crave for pure spiritual milk. Or I crave for the Word of God. What is the initial thing that should happen in order for that to be a reality? Come on, you can figure it out, di ba? Huh? Hunger? Yeah, yeah. but well, you, know, you know, hunger and craving, that's the same thing. So ano yung prerequisite to hunger and craving? Huh? It's okay. Don't be hesitant. You know, be brave. Be courageous. Okay. Say it on your mind. Wala namang masamadan. Okay. So, what would be the prerequisite? Exactly. Okay. Yen ubi nagusa pa natin dito, right? You have to be born again spiritually in order for you to naturally crave for God's word. Sa madaling salita, nakabuilt in yon sa experience na yon. Kaya nga, isa sa mga bagay that actually can be the cause of why people are not interested in the Word of God is because in the first place, they are not spiritually born again. Now, may mga times naman na isang tao born again, pero he or she does not crave for pure spiritual milk. So, anong dahilan naman nun? Hmm? Sin? Well, could be, yeah. Anything else? Sin could be a possible reason bakit ang isang spiritually born na tao is not craving for the Word of God? Hindi niya nakikita yung value ng Word of God. Okay. Hindi niya nakikita yung value ng Word Why is that happening? Bakit nangyayari sa isang Christian na hindi nagkakaroon ng craving for the Word of God? Any guess? What would make it, uh, what would bring about such a ano, state of heart? Parang wala kang desire sa Word of God, pero actually born again ka. What, what would that, that be the, ano, what is the, ano, the reason behind that? Okay. Mm-hmm. 
which brings us back actually, kung iisipin ninyo, in the Gospels, there is a parable, yung know, parable of the sower. Kung saan nakikita natin doon yung prinsipyo na when a seed is planted kasi, the Word of God, it's supposed to be nurtured din, eh. hindi naman automatic yan. Eh. So it can only grow and bear fruit sa buhay mo in relation doon sa nurturing process ng ginagawa mo. So the Word of God is essential sa growth natin, pero not automatically. Word of God is essential sa growth, pero hindi automatic. Meaning to say, even if the Word of God is planted sa heart mo, tapos irresponsible ka, it can be stolen from your heart by the evil one. Pag hindi mo inalagaan yung heart mo, yung condition ng heart mo, and you allow, you allow your heart to be strangled or to be hardened, hindi rin mag-grow yun. So this is not something na automatic. It is essential, pero not automatic. Okay? Very important na maintindihan natin. We need to study the Word of God, but uh, it's, there's more to it than that. It is essential to spiritual maturity. No? Hebrews 5.11 to 14. Can we read that, somebody? Hebrews 5.11 to 14. Sige, go ahead. You have much to say about this, mm-hmm. but it is hard to make it clear to you because mm-hmm. you no longer try to understand. Mm-hmm. In fact, though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you the elementary truths of God's Word all over again. Mm-hmm. You need milk, not solid food. Mm-hmm. Anyone who lives on milk, being still an infant, is not acquainted with the teaching about righteousness. Mm-hmm. But solid food is for the mature, who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. Alright, remember this. Yan ang sinasabi ko sa inyo. Who by constant use. So the Word of God, hindi yan automatic na. Andiyan sa harapan mo, meron kang you version, meron kang actual Bible na sa tapat mo, o nakikinig ka na sermon. It's more than that. It's engaging with God's Word and using it and applying it and living under it on a day-to-day basis that you begin to really mature and, uh, you know, even yung hunger mo for the Word of God increases. Parang katulad din ng ano yan, when you go to a certain restaurant, like for example, uh, ever since na dinala kami ng anak ko sa ramen, okay? Yun, right? So, nung natikman yung ramen, Ramen is life, okay? Wala, wala na, yeah, wala na kang ibang gusto, ting may pera, oh, ramen, okay? Although ako, hindi ako makain masyado ng ramen, to be honest. Ha? Kasi, unang-una, nakikita ko lumulutang-lutang yung sari-sari mga katabaan doon, right? So, chicken lang ako, para naman to be uh, different, okay? Para mahirapan ako sa pagpili sa menu, yung know, chicken, okay? Pamisa-pamisa ng tumitikim ako. But, just to illustrate, Yung panlasa mo sa isang bagay, it does not happen simply because, you know, naisip mo yan, you know. There is an investment involved. You know, you cannot appreciate the beauty and the wonder of the Word of God if you don't really spend time with it. And spending time with it at first can be a challenge. And, you know, in the Christian life kasi, lalo na pagdating sa maturity, you don't start off with... You know, on journey sa spiritual life is you don't start with parang nandito ko na sa level 10. Eh. You know, uh, you start out, start off sa level 1. Sometimes full of doubts, full of hesita- hesitation, hindi mo alam. You hear the word of God, tapos apply mo, hindi ka sigurado, mag-work out ba yun. But at least you're walking in that direction. And when you do, God confirms it. And, th- and so that adds to the knowledge that you have that God is true which gives you greater motivation the next time to obey the Lord. So it's a built-in cycle sa buhay mo, and you become more mature as you begin to trust more and more of God's Word, which hindi mangyayari if you don't use it, and you don't apply it. Di ba? So nagkakaroon ka ng depth of understanding and appreciation kapag, you know, talagang hindi ka lang nakikinig, you know, inoobey mo to, sinusunod mo to, ginagamit mo ito, and as you do so, more and more na-appreciate mo yung reality ng Word of God na hindi pala nagjo-joke-joke lang si Lord. It's really true. You know, so that's how your faith becomes strength and true knowledge. The knowledge of God's Word. Okay? Tapos pangatlo, ang reason no, why we should study the Bible, it is essential to spiritual effectiveness. 2 Timothy 3, 16-17. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, that's good. You memorized it, uh, JV. Excellent. Now, you know, all Scripture is God-breathed, which means uh, don't underestimate the spiritual value in the Word of God. 
Okay? It's God breathed. Ibig sabihin, hindi lang yung words, hindi lang yung parang nasa papel, you know. God is speaking through His Word. Alright? So, very important yung attitude mo and faith nyo whenever you approach the Word of God. God can speak to you. Pag binabasa mo lang ang Word of God ng parang wala ka lang concept na kinakausap ka ng Panginoon, that can be a useless exercise. Pero pag iniisip mo na, Lord, speak to me, let the Word of God come alive in my heart, then you are in the right frame of mind pag pinasok mo yung Word of God. Now, it is useful. Kaya sabi ko nila, if you're using it, so it's useful talaga. Paano mo malalaman na the Word of God is useful sa'yo? Kasi it's correcting you, it is rebuking you, it is training you, you know, uh, it's teaching you. So, dalin salita, you know that yung Word of God is adding value sa buhay mo kasi may nachi-change eh. Right? So, natuturuan ka ng totoo, you know, nakokorek ka, nare-rebuke ka, nati-train ka. Then you know the Word of God is actually uh, practical sa buhay mo. Kasi kung nagbasa ka lang, you know, tapos wala lang, natulog ka lang, there's walang nabago sa idea mo, wala, wala kang nag-gain na new knowledge about life, okay? Hindi ka na-correct sa anumang maling pagkaintindi mo, o hindi ka nas, nat, natut, nas, tra, nasanay o na-train sa isang class in a ministry, skill, whatever, then it was just say, parang nagbasa ka lang, nag-fulfill ka lang ng obligasyon mo. And, and that's not really going to help you. Okay? Uh, it's better actually to just masticate or meditate sa konting word lang. Di ba? Of course, not, hindi ka naman ganun forever, pero at least start ka doon konti, may kli. Yung talagang inaano mo siya. Then, what? You ask the, yourself the question, ano ang binabago nito sa thinking ko? Well, what new knowledge am I being informed about dito? That probably I don't know. Kasi revelation ng Word of God eh. What is being told to me right now through this Word about God, about the world, about me, about my neighbor, about my work, about my family, about Satan, well, about anything? What is being added sa'yo sa kaalaman mo that you did not know before? Okay. What is being corrected? What is yung akala mo na mali pala and now it's being corrected? What is being transformed? So these are the kinds of questions that you should be thinking about whenever na nagbabasa ka ng Bible. Okay? So it is actually uh, very helpful sa ating effectiveness. So that, sabi nga, the man of God may be thoroughly equipped. You would not accept or you would not ac- ano, expect na a-acceptin ka sa kahit anong klaseng trabaho if you do not have the capacity to do that work, if you are not capable of doing that work. Okay? Diba ba, nag-a-apply ka, tinatanong ka eh, ng mga skills mo and competencies mo, etc. Sa ministry, minsan, iniisip natin, ang kailangan lang yung heart. Sabi nga kanina, sinabi ni Howard Hendricks, parang mahalaga lang yung heart. I mean, heart is important, pero heart lang ba yung pinag-uusapan natin dyan? You know, you have to be able to handle the Word of God. So, Pastor Regina and myself, we want to raise up communicators of God's Word dito sa LCC. Okay? And, and that cannot happen simply because parang, you know, feel na feel mo si Lord, parang grabe, natouch ako ng song na yun, yeah, hallelujah, you know. Pero wala kang content, wala kang knowledge of God's Word. Gets you? Hindi, hindi pwede yun. In fact, uh, among our congregation, minsan, nakikita natin yung problem recurring, is we have leaders who are not getting deeper into God's Word. It's more like para experience, experience, experience. Ito tingin ko, mahal ka naman ni Lord, which is the usual cliche, di ba? Ikaw papabayaan ni Lord. May purpose naman si Lord sa iyo dyan, you know? Huwag ka mag-alala. You know, God is good, compassionate si Lord, and blah, blah, blah. And all of that is parang cliche lang minsan. Uh, but what we want to see sana is a growing knowledge of the Word of God sa mga tao. I'm not saying na, Magaling ka lang mag-quote ng scripture kasi si Kibuloy magaling mag-quote ng scripture. But, you know, it's, it's, not, it's more than that, okay? So, what is the cost? Anong cost nito? First, number one is effort. Say with me, effort. Effort. So, hindi yan yung nila landing ng aeroplano, right? Okay. Sabi ni Dallas Willard, sabi niya, uh, grace is not against effort, it's against the earning, okay? Famous words. So, Totoo yun. Effort is something na isama ninyo sa vocabulary nyo in the Christian life. Okay? Exert all effort. Ganun. Be diligent. Which means, ang ministry po is a kind of work. I was talking to some men uh, sa remix, okay? We were talking about ministry. 
And sabi ko sa kanila, one of the things na tingin ko is a stumbling block and the reason why a lot of Christians are not progressing pagdating nila sa pagsuserve na kay Lord is they don't see ministry as work. They see it as ministry, which of course with all the connotation noon, pag sinabi nating ministry, di ba? Maybe it's, you know, dapat, you know, it's more people tayo. It's uh, very important yun. Wag, wag ka mag correct kasi baka ma-offend. You know, it's a uh, heart, heart, heart. You know, we don't see it as work. I mean, you don't do that when you're at work. When you're working, iba yung mindset mo eh. In fact, you know, none of us dito will intentionally be late for work. Typically, you know? With some exceptions, siguro. Yun na generalize ko lang. Pero most of us will not be late at work and most of us will not sleep at work. And, and generally speaking, oh, and most of, most of us, right, most of us will not intentionally become mediocre in our work, generally speaking, if we want to stay so work new. So how many people see ministry and the Christian life, because ser- serving God in ministry is not an add-on to the Christian life. It's part of the Christian life. Everyone should use the gifts, I begin, that has been given to him. So ministry is not an option. Ministry is essential to what it means to follow Christ. How many people see ministry as work? Very few. I'm sorry. Because if you see it as work, then you will treat this as work, right? I'm not saying naman na magiging wala tayong pahalaga sa relationship kasi relationship vital yan sa work eh. Pero hindi naman yun ang problema natin minsan sa church eh. Lalo na sa church. Hindi natin masyado problema eh. Lalo na sa ROCC siguro. I'm speaking, you know, not in a prideful manner. Pero sa ROCC naman, medyo pagdating sa community ship, parang dumutulo na sa tayong natin. We, we really value it, diba? Peace process. You know, yeah. Kaya alam, minsan sobra tayo doon sa side na yun. Wala tayo sa side ng excellence of work. Okay? So it, it does make uh, a point na very important. Effort, very important yan. Openness to God. Romans 8, 34, 35. Somebody read that? Proverbs. Ah, Proverbs pala. Sorry. Proverbs 8, 34, 35. Somebody? Sige, ikaw na. Don't worry. Blessed are those who listen to me, mm-hmm. watching daily at my doors, mm-hmm. waiting at my doorway. Mm-hmm. For those who find me, for those who find me, find life, and receive favor from the Lord. Mm-hmm. What's that? Bible. All right, good. So basically, yung desire natin and willingness natin to meet with God, essential yan. It's essential sa ano yan sa you know, pag-approach ng Bible. Because the Bible is, of course, God's word sa atin. So, behind the word, behind those words na nakikita mo sa scripture is a personal God. A God who is a person who wants to relate with us. So, kung wala kang desire, you cannot be a consumer of God. Hindi pwedeng consumer ka with the things, the things of God. <laughs> Para ka lang gumagamit, you know, ng games or whatever, you know. You have to, you have to de- you know, desire God as a person. You have to relate with Him. Okay? Hindi mo siya pwedeng gamitin. You know? You don't go to the Bible para ma-inspire. You go to the Bible in order to meet God, in order to hear God. And so your interest and your desire must be focused on Him as a person. Very essential yan. Cost yan talaga in terms... Kasi kahit anong relationship naman may cost yan eh. So yung relationship ko sa family ko, sa asawa ko, sa mga anak ko, may cost sa akin yun. I have to... I'm not saying expensive sila. I'm saying na uh, it, it would cost time and effort for me to sit down. And to be honest, minsan hindi ko gustong gawin yun. Uh, to be honest, you know, sometimes uh, when I'm talking with uh, anyone in my family, minsan mayroon kong gustong gawin. Does that happen to you? Mayroon kong gustong gawin. And parang gusto kong, parang minsan na-imagine ko sana mayroong app or whatever na nandun pa rin ako pero actually wala na ako ron. So they're just talking to me, pero actually, wala na ako tonight somewhere else. <laughs> so you can ask it temptation. But it does cost me to focus myself on God and other people as well. Openness to change. Romans 8.29. <coughs> Romans 8.29, what does it say? Yes. 
kung sino'y meron na, magbasahin na. Sino? Mm-hmm. 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 All right. Okay. So, ang me isa sa mga means of grace is of course the word of God. The means of grace. So, pag sinabi natin, Lord, give me grace. Yeah. Please understand what that means. Yeah. It means, Lord, help me to um, to appreciate and to make use of the grace that is available through the different means. At isa sa mga means niyan is the word of God. Okay. Ano ang sabi niya? Ang sabi niya, when, when you hear the word of God, and you engage, and you obey, obey, that's how the grace of God works. Grace is, of course, hindi lang yung attitude ni Lord sa iyo. Grace is supernatural ability. So, paano ka nagkakaroon ng supernatural ability to do the things that otherwise you cannot do by yourself? Nagkakaroon ka ng grace when you interact the Word of God, with the Word of God. Okay? So, hindi lang yung parang normal na nagbasa ka lang. By obeying God's Word, by listening to God's Word, processing it, and then saying, Yes, Lord, Amen, nag and then you align yourself in the Word of God, and then you stay accountable in that direction. All of those actions na ginagawa mo allows the grace of God to work more deeply sa buhay mo so that in the end, ang mangyayari, you grow in the grace and knowledge of God. Ganun yun, okay? Just for you to understand. So pag wala kang Word of God sa buhay mo, it affects your ability mo to resist temptation, it affects your ability to do ministry, uh, if, ano siya, May de- detrimental siya. Okay, ano yung process? It's called inductive Bible study. Inductive versus deductive. Okay? Ano kay ba ng deductive sa ka-inductive? Maliban sa spelling. Hmm. Hmm. From specific to general. Yun ang inductive. And deductive is? General to specific. Okay. So another way of looking at it, di ba? Uh, is that uh, pag inductive, you're trying to discover, not yet make up your conclusions yet, you're trying to discover toward, you know, a, a conclusion. Diba? Samantalang pag deductive naman, parang more or less meron nga ng idea, and then you're just investigating kung tama ba yung idea mo. Right? right. So, uh, paano yung proseso? Now, dito, traditionally, ganito ang wording. Number one is observation. Observation. In my approach to teaching you know, this process, I use the acronym DIG. Okay? Pero parehas din yun. Okay? Mas maganda lang sa akin yung DIG kaysa dun sa you know, observation and interpretation and application. Okay? DIG kasi is discover the details. So same lang yun, observation. So what do I see? What are the facts? So, sabi niya rito, salt, right? The same thing na tinuturo ko sa inyo, salt, okay? Uh, although hindi ko na spelling niya rito, it's T-S-L-A, okay. Sla, okay. All right. Uh, ob- ano, reading carefully and making observations, susi yan sa pagiging mahusay na uh, interpreter ng Word of God. Kasi yung, yung careful reading and observing uh, which is very simple lang naman to do, using a pen or whatever, a lapis. As you read, you read slowly, and then taking note, making observations about things that hindi mo na normally mapapansin uh, kung hindi mo talaga sasadyayin pansinin. A lot of people, when they read the Bible, they just read through it, and they inisip na lang, okay, application to sa akin. Without making any kind of careful thought on, uh, you know, some details. I remember sa, ano namin, sa class namin years ago, my professor, uh, Dr. Lane Turner, okay, uh, asked us to look at Acts 1A. And I'm sure galing ito kay Howard Hendricks yung idea nito. Sabi niya sa Acts 1A, sabi niya sa amin, first meeting, uh, please look for 20 things that you can observe doon sa Acts 1A. So assignment namin yun. So 20 things. Pagdating namin next class, so confident kami, uh, you know, sinabi namin yung 20 things na napansin namin, Okay, may period, ganito, ganito, may kama, okay, whatever, okay. So, sabi niya, very good, excellent. Okay, so for your next assignment, look for 50 more <laughs> sa Acts 1-8. Okay. <laughs> so, ngayon, mahihirap na kasi yung 20, medyo may, nagawa pa na, yung 50 pa. Okay, so ayaw na namin pumasok after that, para kayo na namin magbumalik sa klase. Because we were thinking na, you know, he would, be, he would be asking for more. But, how many of you think na, if you just look, at a text carefully, you might be able to observe 
a lot of things. Kaya nga siya sabi ni Pidge kanina, pag mayroon nagsasabit sa akin ng, ano, ng mga preaching outline nila, yung unang tingin ko pa lang, alam ko na na hindi nag-observe. Eh. Nag-jump na agad doon sa truth, trust, okay? Gusto nila, gusto nila matapos na agad. Gusto nila. But uh, sometimes I would walk them through it, which is sometimes ang hirap, you know, lalo na pag tinatype mo lang yun sa messenger, ang hinap. So, but, you know, it, it's talaga tedious for me, but... But after that exercise, sabi nila, oh nga, no, hindi ko napansin yun. No? Yeah, yes, you should have done that earlier bago ka nag-submit sa akin ng ganun. Okay? Because that's a skill na kailangan ma-develop. So in this class, I hope na ma-develop sa inyo. So making observations about the family, uh, following. Ano yung mga terms no, na ginagamit? Not just whether words, gusto mo yung words, but meron bang significance yung words na yun? Are, are those technical words? Uh, are those words uh, used intentionally? by the author. Meron bang Old Testament uh, 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 reference yun, yung word na yun, you know? The, uh, just observing na meron ganun is already a major progress. Hindi mo napansin yung isang word, na, yun na isang Old Testament word. Yun na isang word na ginagamit sa temple, for example. Hindi mo napansin yun. That's already detrimental sa interpretation mo sa text. So, the fact na mapansin mo yun. And then, structure, of course, is important, you know? Ang, ang translations natin, praise God, meron silang tulong sa atin. Naglalagay sila ng kama, semicolon, period. Those are very important uh, interpretative uh, helps. Kasi wala namang sa original text na kama, colon, period. Okay? Sa original text, is you all have letters, walang space. Diretso. So, thanks be to God's interpreters. Di ba? Sila na yung gumawa ng hard job na sa nilalagay yung katapusan, yung kama, yung period. No? Kaya pa nakakita kayo ng mga exclamation point, kama, semicolon, gano'n, gano'n. You don't, hindi mo binabaliwala yun because it means something. Pag nakakita ka ng mga but, you know, ganyan. However, therefore, these are not parang nagkataon lang. These are structural markers. These are important clues on how the, the, the thought of the text is being developed. You know, therefore. So you ask yourself, why is it therefore? You know, ano ka nalaman niya? But, you know, diba? like, you know, ganyan. So that, you know, purpose yun, di ba? For the purpose of, in order that, you know. So yan yung mga clues mo sa structure ng text. Di ba? And the fact na dinidivide yan ng, ng translators natin into paragraphs is, wow, thanks be to God, ginagawa nila yon. Kasi malay natin kung ano yung... Pag pinaragraph, ibig sabihin, sa tingin ng interpreter o translator, one thought yun. Kasi yun ang ano nun, reason nun, bakit ginawang paragraph eh. Right? So pag ikaw, nag-exigit ka o nag-aaral ka ng isang paragraph, at nagahanap ka ng maraming points doon, then you should be, you know, aware ka na pinaragrap na nga, which means it's only one point. And whatever thoughts on doon sa loob is only related to, related to that one point. If you're dealing with three paragraphs, then you most likely you have three points. Right? So, clues lahat yun sa pag-aaral ng Bible. Then, of course, yung literary form, bibigyan tuturuan namin kayo rito ng mga iba't ibang mga genres, and uh, iba siguro na pag-aaralan yun, ha? Okay, yung mga figures of speech halimbawa, na pag-aralan niyo ba 'yon? Do you remember those things? Absent, present ba kayo na? All right, yeah. Mga simile, you know, ganyan ganyan, metaphor, susunod sa meta 3. Okay, right. And then of course there's atmosphere, which is the most difficult really, but uh, in, you can actually know the atmosphere of the text <coughs> by reviewing the context of the context. Okay? The context of the cortex. Uh, the cortex are the surrounding text, and the context is the background behind the text. So by understanding when was it written, who wrote it, at what point in time's history, kailan sinulat, all of that adds to an understanding of the atmosphere. Right? But the actual words are ginagamit, rejoice, rejoice, ganyan, ganyan. You know, my dear beloved, ganyan, ganyan. You know, lahat yung mayro mga palatandaan na may certain attitude and atmosphere yung text. So the text can either be confrontational, it could be parang affirming, di ba? It would So mahalaga ito lalo na pag tinuturo mo. Pag yung text affirming, don't rebuke. Right? At kapag yung text naman rebuking, don't be affirming. So very simple lang naman noon 'yon, okay? So Spend most of your Bible study time here with more observation, you'll gain better and more accurate interpretation. So basically, spend time dyan, managaaral kayo ng isang text with ball pen or whatever. Kung gusto nyo, lagyan yung emoticons, smiley, whatever, ganyan-ganyan. 
Those are the kinds of things that dapat ginagawa niyo sa text niyo. So write as much as you can on your Bible or siguro uh, if you're using a, an app or whatever, use some notes siguro uh, where you can write it down. Okay? Before, what I used to do is I print out the text. And then when I print it out sa text, lalo na nagmamahal na yung Bible, that's what I did. Piprint out ko na yung text, ah, doon ako nagsususulat. But when I was a young believer in the Lord, okay, talagang tad-tad yung Bible ko ng sulat. In fact, boy pa yata yung mga Bibles ko na yun. Makikita nyo pa yun sa, at uh, minsan si PG, pag tinitingnan nyo yung ganun ko, yung journal ko, uh, may comment siya palagi na ano daw, wala daw ka puso-puso or anything like that. Puro Greek, you know, puro diagram and everything. So, uh, wala nga, wala siya makikita ng you know, personal. <coughs> okay, next is interpretation, which is, of course, very crucial. But uh, in reality, what you do is observation interpretation simultaneously. You know, reality. You observe and then you interpret. And ang susi talaga sa interpretation, like I said, is, uh, you know, questions, the answers, okay? And then sabi nito, integration. And I would add validation. Yung sinasabi ko lagi, validation. So you ask questions dun sa naobserbahan mo. Nakakita ka ng period. Nakakita ka ng kama. So you ask a question. Some of the questions would be very easy to ask. Some of the questions would be more challenging to ask, siguro. Kasi it's not obvious ganyan. Galit ba si Paul when he was saying this? Uh, was he referring to all the Gentiles? Was he referring only to the people there doing sa Corinth? Was he, you know, referring only to Timothy and, and so forth? Questions that are relevant, ha? Hindi yung anong, anong, anong korte ng ilong ni Paul? You know, irrelevant yung mga question na ganun, okay? Kailangan ng questions mo must be interpretative questions. And then you integrate that with what else na natapuan mo na in the previously na discover mo na. So there's a lot of integration. Then finally, you validate. Baka naman kasi ikaw lang nakakita nung ganun. Ikaw lang naging interpret ng ganun. So please check it out sa mga resources. Research mo. Available na ngayon yan. Constable and all of that. Available. Alright? Okay, any questions about that? The level? Stage? Puro review lang na to. Overview lang ito. Finally, is application. So how does it work? Okay? How it works for me? Uh, if God's word isn't working for me, then how can it be passed on to others? How does it work for others? Uh, God's word can and does have implications for every aspect of our lives. Will we allow it to transform us? So backtrack a little bit. Pag sinabi natin integration, that means I have to come up with a one-sentence truth statement. Right? What is the principle that is now being revealed dito sa text na to? Now, the things application naman, I need, I need to come up with one sentence trust statement. You know, what is the author, original author, wanting his audience to do, to be, or to apply? You know, what gagawin nila? Before you even ask the question, what does it mean to me? Okay? It's important to understand muna yung original meaning. Ano ibig sabihin ni Paul, kay Timothy, in that context, that Timothy could understand in his context. Before you jump to the present time, before you say, therefore, ganito ibig sabihin niyan sa akin ngayon. Because there are things that totoo sa kanya before that cannot be extrapolated sa present. Right? Merong nga bagay na, yeah, totoo yun sa Gentiles. But what about me? And so you remove some of the cultural trappings or some of the, ano doon, alisin mo, in order to get the, the pinaka-essence nung truth na yun. And statement then. Okay? Alright. So steps for personal Bible study. Number one is read. Don't uh, browse. And, uh, you know, how often have you gone back to a passage that you read years earlier and said to yourself, wow, I didn't see that. Well, it does happen. In fact, isa sa pinaka-skill ng mga mauhusay na tagapagturo is that they're able to bring out surprise power from the text. They're able to point out something that you missed or you did not see uh, initially. One of the contemporary preachers who does that very well is si, you know, si Elevation, si, uh, si Fertig. He does that very well. Sometimes extreme, but yeah, he does that very well. Okay? 
uh, some of the things that he says, minsan parang feeling ko parang, as a text ba yan? Or you're just, you know, parang gano'n. Pero he's very good in getting insights uh, from the text na hindi mo, hindi obvious sa'yo. Pag tinignan mo, kung nga, no? Di ba? Parang gano'n. So, uh, yun ang maganda sa atin. That engages the emotion kasi surprises an emotion. Di ba? Surprises an emotion. So, parang tuturo ka, mas may hinahighlight ka isang bagay na hindi namin nakita before. Ooh, wow. So you engage the emotion. So you inspire, right? Mm. Hindi nga ba natuturo ka tulog na kami lahat, you know? Kasi parang nire-rehash mo lang yung sinasabi. And then you record, you take notes. And by the way, sa Get Real app, yeah, for those of you who do not know, meron ng notes capacity yung app natin, ha? For those of you, nung 1932 nyo pa in-open yung Get Real app, <laughs> may notes doon. And... Uh, You can actually take down notes when you're listening. Okay. Thank you for that. Uh, you know, one of the things that I have written recently is yung, uh, I just don't on me na if we want to be effective, kailangan, especially sa panahon natin yan, we have to distinguish between our mission and the means by which we do it. If we, if we, if we get stuck, those uh, mission equals ministry model or the means that we do it, then we won't be able to reach as many people as we can. Our mission is to help people experience real life. That's our mission. Don't get confused with how we do it. Because how we do it can be in many different ways. And one way that we can do it is through our Upbeat or SWC, pero let's not get stuck with it. Right now, I'm so thankful to the Lord kasi nag-break na ng 2,000 ng Real Life Messenger. Ang real, oh yeah, Real Life Messenger. RLCC Messenger. So, for me, that's a platform. That's a pulpit. I say that means I can preach the Word of God to 2,000 plus people at any given time. Okay? Uh, using the power of the internet. And the same lang naman yun eh. Pag, nag, pag nag-preach naman ako, ilabas nyo nakikinig sa akin. Oh, not, I'm not sure about it. Pag nag-preach ako, you know, nagturo ako ng Word of God, how many of you apply? Hindi rin ako sigurado. So, the same lang naman yun. When I post something sa... RLCC Messenger, how many people will reply, respond? Hindi ko alam. It's the same thing. At least 2,000 yun. Okay? So I'm able to reach more people for Christ. About 700 na ngayon ang Real Life, uh, ang Get Real app. So if I post a notification, 700 people will hear it. I can, I can of course, depending on in on yung notifications nyo, no? Pero yung mga naka-on na notification, kasi 2,000 na nag-download, ang nag-on, 650. Okay, I hope yung 650 ka remain araw si Sinyans kasi kung hindi talaga magtatampo ako. Na. Okay, number three is reflect. Alright, uh, you need to reflect. You need to just uh, take the time to be alone, to you know think about what you just read. Turn off your cell phone, go to the beach or park, you know. Uh, now, all of these things are just suggestions for you. Iba-iba tayo ng tao. I, I could not reflect sa beach or sa park. Uh, hindi ako ganung tao, you know. Uh, some people, they want to see nature and then they can reflect. Ako iba. Pag nasa nature ako, tulog ang nare-reflect ko. Okay, para gusto ko matulog. Uh, uh, I can only reflect when I am at home, mag And there's nobody there. That's how I reflect. Okay. Okay. Do you have any questions about it? We we'll just run through it very quickly. Yung pinaka-summary na yung boom process. Any questions that you have? All right, that's good.